so good morning and topic for today's discussion is around azure networking so before we go ahead and discuss about the azure networking let's try and understand on-premise networking and basic IP configuration details. So let's talk about traditional way how it works first, and then we'll go and discuss Azure networking basics. Right, so imagine, <clears throat> imagine your home network first. Right, so within your home, imagine you have a small Wi Fi router. Right, and you have one of the smart TV couple of mobiles are there so and a couple of maybe Alexa right and so on so if you are sending some data to internet let's say you're playing something on YouTube so how this packet will travel how this data will travel anybody uh, uh, I can't. I can't hear you clearly. A bit louder, please. Yeah, it will go to go via Wi-Fi router, then it will go to ISP router. Yeah. <clears throat> Imagine you you have taken a connection from okay, and now tell me. It goes via Wi-Fi router to uh, then ISP. ISP. Right. So here I want to understand you can see public IPs. On the router configuration page. Sorry? On the router configuration page, uh, because router is allocating the private IPs to all the devices in the home. Okay. So on the device itself, we can see the private IP, any device, okay, be it okay. Alexa TV or anything. Oh, what we can do is IP... we can we can simply check it yeah. out here. Yeah. Right. Yes. So this is my public IP means if you look at who gave me this IP address, who allocated this IP address, Tata Sky. <clears throat> so I'll put this in outside the room. Then what about the inside? Inside you have to define some range. Let's say in home or of small office or any other small network configurations you would see this kind of ranges normally we'll mention like this but whenever you see the internal ip address let's say i want to find out my internal ip address so 146 is my ip for my laptop correct and similarly let's say what is this IP? 1.1. .1. This is Wi-Fi router's internal IP, and this is the external IP which is associated when, when the ISP provided some IP. Right. And so on. Whatever the whatever the device that you have, every device will get a IP address within this range specified. I say in this case, this is the 
ip boundary or normally we don't use slash 16 this will be slash 24. i'll explain what it is how how this can be calculated and how this can be utilized in azure also right so what i want to understand here is how you define these ranges if you have any other device how you will find out within the network Let's say I don't know if there is a one more virtual machine if I uh, turn on on the back end and automatically it is getting some DHCP. If I don't know anything, how we, how you will find out? Simply go to advanced IP scanner. Right, I'll give this range and try to scan it. <clears throat> give it a minute, I'll see. Some of those devices will be discovered along with the MAC address. I have two Wi Fi routers and One forty six is showing as host dot docker dot internal, which is my laptop. It is not the docker. And one twenty two, I believe, my mobile. And this is my Cisco switch, and two more Wi Fi routers. I guess yeah. So five active devices at the moment. And similarly, if you take if you take the small enterprise or a large enterprise how this network topology will be defined. Right, so before we go ahead and talk about that, let's try and understand what is this private IP and what is this public IP. Actually, I have mentioned here something, private IP and public IP, but what it is, how we will define it. The IP which is routable is public IP, the IP which is not routable is private IP. <coughs> okay. So we call it as a routable versus non-routable non IPs, right? Yes. So let's try and understand what is this routable and non-routable. So if you consider, go back to basics. I am not a CCNA guy. I just want to give you the easiest way how you can do your Azure day-to-day -day job. Right. So normally all these IP addresses will be divided into three different classes you have a five classes but i don't want to touch upon rest of the classes let's let's say class a class b and class c okay so what is the class a range starts with one total 126 right that's a class A boundary. And then 120 to 190. Correct. This is class B range. And when it comes to class C, this is a boundary. What is this first of all? <clears throat> this is your IP V4 32 bit configuration. Correct? Where is this 34 32 bit? If you consider this is 8 bits, 8 bits, 8 bits. And 8 bits consolidatedly it will form your 32 bit ip address if you look at the hexadecimal values or, or, or the sorry binary values right now same class a class b class c we do have a d and e reserved for reserved for a, a government entities and r and d so that that we really don't use it for a general public so within this class a within this class b and class C, we still have 
further segregation we call it as private and public what is the private trend within class a so 10.255 255 255 means they have taken this range out and defined as a private range and the rest of the class a range is public range so what was that 1.29.255255255 and 11 This is a complete public range. So, <clears throat> public means routable, private means non routable. When I say routable, ping, just a second, IPv4 address, if you see you will be able to reach the servers over the internet when i when i talk about public in this case this is your one of the public ip example within class a right this matches with the class a range if you look at correct <coughs> let's <clears throat> Let's move on to class B. So, what is the private range for class B? And then public range comes under 128. One seventy two dot fifteen fifty five to fifty five and one seventy two dot thirty two two one ninety one two fifty five two fifty five two fifty five. That is a class B public range. Any examples in class B? You can see the Google is hosted on class B range 172 270. If you look at the private range, it is also starts with 172, but you should not look at the first octet. Let's look at the second octet. If it is 17 between 31, you call it as private. Rest all, rest all, we call it as public. So it is near to your private range, but fall under your public range. Right. And similarly for class C also. <clears throat> what is the class C private range? 192, 168, And when it comes to public range, two one ninety two. 168 oh sorry look at running on class C public range means public ranges are reachable or you can reach you can ping them over the internet and private ranges are bounded to 
you are building just like my home if you look at the home ip range this fall under your class c private range and let's say my laptop ip is assigned with 146 right my laptop has got 146 similarly if if you check your laptop ip address when you connect your wi-fi in your home you might be getting the same range but last octet is different with the different ip different ip but the range is same so this is bounded to this is bounded to my home and what every every home has their own wi-fi or uh, i'll say every office has its own wi-fi ranges then that whatever the ip ranges that are being generated from the wi-fi router or from the dhcp that are bounded to particular building only right then how you will how you will decide whether it is a 24 or something else what was what was this last 24 by the way the cidr format okay so if you are defining the subnet what do you mean by subnet so let's say commonly in azure we will use these things uh, i'll try to give you now easier easier way to define the ip ranges within the azure or maybe in the in the traditional way also so let's say so if somebody is saying 10.0.0.0 slash 24 what it means Bits okay means works. it is the range starts from zero to till mm -hmm. to 55 that's it that is the complete range when you give slash 24 that means the last digit will completely utilized last digit will completely utilized means it starts with zero and ends with 255 but out of which in your traditional way what we can do we can we can only use 1 2 2 54 correct because one ip will be given to broadcasting another one will be given to sub submit right 0 and 255 you can't really use it so what what we really can use it is 1 2 2 54 so how many ips how many ips you'll get usable of 254 ips even though you have a 256 you can use 254 but in azure when you come when it comes to azure it will eat three more ips so 0 1 2 3 and 255 you can't use so your range starts from 4 to 254 so maximum usable ips you'll get is 251 this is same this is same for aws as well okay so 0 1 2 3 these these four ips and the last ip will be taken by azure and you'll get 251 so when i when i say slash 25 then what it is simple just keep on dividing by 2 to 10.0.0.127 or 128 okay. 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 <clears throat> that's a boundary even within this you will not be able to use 0 and 128 you can use 1 to 127 right how many ips that you will get 122. minus 2 122. so 126 ips normally you'll get i guess <clears throat> right and when it comes to Azure, again, 0, 1, 2, 3 is taken out. And the last one is taken out. So 
4 to 127. So 122 IPs, I believe. Mm -hmm. So if you if you keep on increasing this, I'm not mentioning everything over there. So you'll get 64 IPs in this boundary and usable IPs will be minus as per. And if you keep on increasing this, you'll get 32. 16. 8 IPs is the boundary. Thirty, I'll get a four. 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 <clears throat> right. So you'll get only one IP. That's it. That is a last exhausted subnet. So if I <laughs> go back to Google, when I say this is the IP, this is the IP, public IP. If I go on ping adjacent IP, oh, I, I don't know, maybe my neighbor, as per logic, you will not be able to, because that is also public IP, no, it should ping, right, in that case, you will not be able to ping them. Reason being, they all allocated in the form of slash 32, even though the IPs are adjacent to each other, you can't ping them. Because the, the allocation from the switch itself is defined in such a way. So every IP you'll get with slash 32 notation. Let's say if I want to increase the number of IPs, how, how we can do that? slash 23 means the IP range starts from the same, but it ends with 1.255. And how many IPs you will get? We'll get 512 IPs in the boundary, correct? And if you keep on increasing this thing, 1024. Mm -hmm. 21. Oh, sorry. Yeah. 20. 4096. Right. And 19. Let's say 8. 8,000 approximate. 18. We'll get 16,000. And 17, I'll get 32,000. 16, 65,000. 65,536 or something, right? Where when I say 65,536, from where it starts? 0 0.0.0 to 10.0.255. Means if I gave a slash 24, the last digit will completely exhaust. If I give a slash 16, the last two digits, the last two digits will completely exhaust. Means for each for each class slash 16 subnet or a slash 16 definition, you will see the second octet will be constant. So how many slash 16 ranges that you can define in a class A subnet? Sixteen. Two fifty-five. So how many slash sixteen ranges that you can define within the class A private range? 
Mm -hmm. When I say slash 16, I said the second digit will change. So how many how many iterations in the second digit? 0 to 255. So 256 ranges you'll get. Added. Okay. So in each in each iteration, you'll get 65,536 IPs. Right? So you can multiply the number of IPs you'll get in this range class here. Right. So I, I don't want to mention everything on the class B. Let's have a look and understand 172.16.00 slash 16 to till what is the last one? 172.16.31.0.0 slash 16. So how many ranges? 16 to 25 and 11. 16 into 65,536 IPs. You will get the total in class, total in class B, private range. Because it starts with 16 and ends with 31. Each each uh, range will give you 65,000 IPs. And this is more of your class here private range. And coming back to class C, pretty simple, All right? Simple and plain 192 0.0 slash 16. So you'll get 65,536 IPS within this. Means every home uniquely can assign 65,000 IPS if you properly define your Wi Fi router. That we don't use that range, but how to how to define this? Okay, how let's say this is my class C private range. So how I can further divide it into small, small subnets, right? small, small chunks. So, and what is the need of creating a small chunks or a small subnets? Any, any such requirement? Anybody, any thoughts? Yeah, because you have the multiple department. Because Sorry? Multiple department. You have to uh, submit uh, each and every department with different subnets. Okay. So both both cannot be pinged. Each and every one cannot be pinged with each other. Restrict the communications. Restrict the communications. Okay. Any 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 other thoughts? Right. Security boundary. Um, we are trying to create some logical security. Right. Yeah. So create a logical security boundary so that you can organize the resources in an efficient way. So for that example, if you can take three tier application. Right, if you if you can take the three tier application, you have front end presentation web and application layer and then database. So if I assign everything in one subnet or one IP range, like this, so let's say I have kept one server here and I've kept a couple of servers here and one database server here. Imagine this has got 192.168.1.200. Like this. 
now if somebody who is trying to access your web server over the internet they'll come and reach here means If somebody accesses this website, the traffic will go and reach this website. So in short, this is web, web facing. So is there any requirement that end user will directly come and access this application server or end user directly come and access this database server? And do we allow end users to access these things on the internet? No. Right, so how you will, if, if I, if I put everything on a same subnet, I'll say, so how you will provide a security to them? Through routing. It's all only, if it, it's all on in the, within the one subnet. No need uh, of routing. Then uh, do you think routing will work? Within, Energy groups. Within one sub. We're not talking about anything Azure within in traditional okay. way within one subnet. If you place 10 devices, all the 10 devices can talk to each another. Correct? Okay, firewall type, firewall unit type. Right. No, we have to so, that's a, that's the confusion part. So the the best practice is don't mix match these things. Don't use like this. Let's define in a proper way. I have this whole range. Why can't we break it down to further? Okay. Uh, I have a question, Shrinivas. Yeah. Sorry. Yeah. Go ahead. Uh, 192, 168, it's a private range, right? How can somebody from their browser can log into my web server? It's a private IP. I have a has to have a public facing IP. I have a natted public IP. Okay. Okay. So, so once they reach, they can log in into this. If they can log in into this, they can access this, they can access this. Because this is adjacent to each other. Okay. Correct? Once this is like said, I'm, I'm... I'm, I'm zero networking. When you say natted public IP, what is what does that mean? Natted public IP. What if you mean? if you access this this public IP over the internet, that will automatically route the traffic to internal private IP. Okay. External private to public. Right. So once this is let's say this is compromised, means somebody tried tried and successfully hacked this, they can obviously try and reach these servers also. Because everything falling under same IP range. So how you can logically segregate? Let's say web servers, I try to put in 192.168. Just a second. Ten dot zero slash twenty-four. What do you mean by slash twenty-four? You know the last I already told you the last digit will the last digit will exhaust means every web server will get an IP address from this range 192.168.10.12.255. That is a web server IP range. Similarly, app server, how I will define for all the app servers. Right. Why can't we use 11? We can, we can still use 11 or 12 or 13, anything. Just for your easy understanding, I'm just mentioning 20. Right. DB 192.168.30.0 slash 24. So that all the three different kind of applications can run on a different subnet and within the subnet means within the subnet means within this boundary all the 255 devices can talk to each and other device but if this device is trying to send some data to another device in other subnet then they have to follow certain rules and regulations which you will impose on the switch Right. That is where this, where you will define all these things in your traditional way. You will imp, you will uh, apply these things in the switch. How to check that out? Yeah. 
if I go to my Cisco switch, IP configurations, I have defined around mm -hmm. 10 or different, 10 odd VLANs. Okay, if you look at VLAN 10, it starts with 10.1 and subnet mask is 255. Means VLAN 10 says all the IPs that are part of 10.1234, it's just like my web. This is my VLAN 10, this is VLAN 20, and this is VLAN 30 over here if you compare. This is how we define VLANs or subnets within the main IP range slash 60. Okay, and how I will associate, let's say VLAN management, VLAN settings. So this is how we define, simply define one VLAN. For each VLAN, you can define IP range over here. Okay, and the first IP, what have what has given here? What, what you can see here, this is the gateway for each and every, for each and every VLAN. Means even, even in this picture here, in between 10.1 to 10.255, there must be one gateway. There is no definition of what, which IP you should use as a gateway. You can use any one IP as a gateway, either that will be first IP or last IP as per best practice. But if you don't want to use and you want to confuse your uh, admins uh, or your, your audience, then you can use some random IP range like 201 or 160, anything. Anything within that range, you choose one gateway who is responsible to route the traffic outside. So in my case, if I go back to my Wi-Fi router picture, here in this case, this is the one who is who is actually collecting the data and sending it to internet. Means every device should send the data to this, and this is responsible to send the data out. Similarly, if I talk about the logical boundary here, within this 255 devices, one device must be your gateway. What is that gateway? Your switch itself acting as a gateway. So let's say within this range, I said 10.1. What is IP? 1.100, right? So I'll go to incognito window and 192, 168, 10.1. Or, yeah, 10.1 should work. 192.168.20.1. It's not connecting. No. Why oh, it is not? Let me see, is there any other range? 1.254? No, 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 this these are all gateways. Means okay. if I try to use this browser, you, you will be able to get the same screen. This the same screen you'll get. Should work ideally. Okay, so I have to flip the network. I have to flip the network, then I'll be able to ping them, ping the other ranges because I've connected to a different Wi-Fi router. I have a three devices, so I connect to the different. Okay, anyway, so these, if you look at these IPs, so these IPs, you will be able to ping them or access them. When you try to access any of these IP, it will route to the same device. So. In each, in each subnet, in each VLAN, right, you have one dedicated gateway, which is that switch itself, where you define that VLAN, right? In short, if I have one device here, another device here, and some other device here, and let's say one device here. So if this is having IP 10.11, and this is 10.12, 
and this is 10.100. So if these three devices want to exchange some data internally, seamlessly they can exchange because all, all the three devices are part of the same VLAN. Okay. Yeah, right. Yeah. So if this device want to send some data, let's say this device want to send some send some data from 10.11 to 10.11 to 20.40. Where is this 20.40 sitting? This is 20.40. So this device directly cannot send any data to this. So what happens? There is one switch which is sitting outside and connected to all these three VLANs. So here the switch IP is 192.168.10.1. Here it is 10. Dot, sorry, 20.1. And here it is 30.1. This is the configuration what I gave in this picture. If I go back to my switch, 10.1, 20.1, and 30.1. So, so what it will do, 10.11 will give it to 10.1, which is gateway for this whole range. So 10.1 or a 20.1, doesn't matter. Both of them are logically separated but physically defined on the same switch so this gateway will transit to another gateway which is 20.1 it will receive and 20.1 will again broadcast and your 20.40 will receive the packet like this so again once the 20.40 want to send some data to 10.11 it goes to the switch and again it goes to this device like this understood the significance of this segregations and how you will control the traffic in traditional way. can you ask That's, one quick question yeah um, could you could you go to the router page the cisco one uh -huh. what is this uh at the from the bottom the second last item slash zero vlan slash zero what is that above vlan 100 70 okay 60. i'm sorry okay okay sorry. 70 60 50. okay got it sure. yeah it's it's just on my definitions here what i defined in the switch because everything in my control right yes yes okay right so this is how we do the traditional way so let's try and understand this is all home network and a small and a small uh, configurations. Let's take a look at the enterprise level. Imagine you have two data centers and two offices, small one, but let's take the enterprise level scenario. So like this, if you have one data center, Like this. So, whoever is designing the network on the enterprise level, let's say 10 dot 1 dot 0 dot 0 to 10 dot 10 dot 0 dot 0 means he dedicated the first 10 digits of second octet. That means 65k, sorry, 65k into 10 these many ips that you can define in this data center and similar case with this 10.11.0.0 to 10.20.0.0 do we really use these many ranges never know right just a hypothetical similar now 
when it comes to office 10.101 and one means you can't expect more than 500 people or two. let's hardly 10,000 people working on the same dedicated building. This is the definition means everybody who works in India office, right? So they'll they'll get this IP range when they go to office and sit in the office and connect to their network. This is what the range I have defined. Similarly, for US people, they'll get this range. And all the data center, primary data center equipment will get in between these ranges. It can be 10 dot, 1 dot, 200 dot, 20 randomly and 10 dot, 10 dot, 209 dot, 16. Anything in between your, your devices must be in between these two ranges. And similar case with this DC. Right now, further how you will define, as I said, you will have multiple switches here. You'll have multiple switches here. And you'll have multiple switches here as well. Right. So what you will do, you will configure the VLANs across all the switches and some central switch. Try to push the configurations into all the switches. So in this office, let's say it is three story building. Okay. And when I say three story building in each floor, you have a left wing and right wing. Right. And in each floor, we have a 500 people sitting. So I want to further segregate these things. Let's say uh, first floor left wing and first floor right wing. What kind of ranges I want to define? 10, 201, 10.0 slash 24. So that you'll get 254 IPs on the left hand side and so on. Right. No, there is there is a Wi-Fi range in each floor. People will connect to Wi-Fi also connect to the LAN. So for Wi-Fi range, when you connect to Wi-Fi within the office, you have a dedicated Wi-Fi range for everybody. 201.200.0 slash 22. If I give a slash 22, how many IPS you will get? My bad. Slash 22, 1024 IPs you will get. Means if you assign slash 24, slash 22 into this office, that means your IP range starts from 10.201.200.1 to 10.0 or 203.255. That is our last. So in between these ranges, all your devices will get connected when you connect to your Wi-Fi in the office. Now, the thing is how you will send this data from 10.201 to 200.50. There is a laptop which is sitting here and 200.50 last last digit is 50. So this device want to send some data to there is one more device here. This is the IP. So how, how this will send? Obviously, you have to have VPN here and you have to have VPN here. And there will be some some sort of configurations that you need to perform. Then this switch will send a traffic to this VPN. VPN put in the put the data into tunnel that goes to US and this VPN will receive and hand over to this switch and this switch will further send it to this IP. Just like the previous example, what I said, from this device to switch, switch will internally exchange and switch will send it to another server. Here also, switch will receive the traffic and switch doesn't have the nearby designation. Destination, destination is somewhere else. So it will forward to VPN, VPN further forward to VPN, 
VPN further forward to switch. Switch will receive a uh, switch will broadcast again over here that you will you will receive that packet on the data center side. Means when you're trying to access the server, this is how your data travels over the internet and reaches to your US data center, provided you have site to site VPN. And if you are not coming to office, you're working from home, then there will be point to site VPN. You have to connect to your wife, uh, your VPN, then you'll. Your yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm here. I'm here. Looks like I got a network issue. Right. Yeah, yeah. So let's say if I introduce Azure, this was already there and it is almost like let's say from last 10 years, the setup is there. So if I want to introduce Azure over here, so where we should start. Okay. This is all basic traditional way fundamentals how we do on a day to day, maybe in your home or in your office or your enterprise anywhere. But when it comes to Azure, how these things will work. Correct. So pretty much we covered in the last session. You need tenant ID, right? You have a subscription. And once you have, you need a resource group. Okay, so once you have a resource group, then you are ready to go with. Universe, you have to change the network. You're flipping a lot. Let me see. Yeah. Some maintenance activity that I will do randomly. Sometimes I'll face this issue. After a minute or two, it will automatically get resolved. See, uh, this is 200 MB connection. Just give me a second, guys. I'm trying to flip it. Okay, please stay on the bridge. Hello, I'm audible. Yes, you are. Yes. Right, so I'll just change it to the different Wi-Fi. Let me see if this will help. Right, so what I'm talking about, the basic prerequisites are you need to you need to take an account. You need to enroll for yourself. You'll get a tenant ID. Okay, raise yourself and get one subscription, and then create a resource group. Okay, so once that is done, then you need to dis decide we have multiple regions. Let's say Azure regions. Okay, we have these many regions where you want to set up your network topology. Okay, it, you have in India, we have three three regions and in Australia, a couple of them, US, UK, Europe and rest of the world. So you have these many locations where you will define the network. So your network, wherever you define a network or wherever you try to create your VNet, that is logical boundary within that region. Let's say you are saying you must have some business case, right? If you are a new startup, 
then it is up to you if you are or if you have an office in uh, mumbai then go ahead and create in uh, mumbai region or if you are uh, having operations in chennai then you try to create your vnet and define your top network topology within chennai that's that's okay when it comes to enterprise then you need to understand okay so what is the topology and where are where my customers are residing and where i can go and create the network or where i can go and define the my network topology let's say in this case within this four four of premises two data centers and two offices i want to shut down this secondary data center and want to migrate a couple of devices which are here okay leisurely onto azure in that case this will remain same this will remain same and this will remain same but this is going to be shut down where it is located let's say this is located in towards east so we just need to have your this is primary and secondary you're planning to put in azure right not you want to get rid of this the third party or dr data center which is uh, which is currently located somewhere else in the west side but this is third party contracted or leased data center so in that case what you need to do you need to take this west so your azure must be on the same location right small small idea is on the west itself because what what you are trying to shut down you're trying to shut down one of the data center which is sitting in west so this is one way to define your region or else whenever you get a business case customer will tell you where my user base is sitting and where you can go ahead and define your ip ranges or where you can go ahead and adopt which region that you want to utilize for your business let's say you have majority of the users from uk so you you can you can go ahead and deploy your business in uk then you have to go to uk south or uk west and define your vnet right wherever you go and define it that vnet is logically and physically the software component is sitting in that data center it is not global component it is local component so as i told you resource group can be a global means if you if you create a resource group in chennai and your associated resource can be in uk there's no there's no restriction in it but when you define your vnet in uk you have to place all your devices inside the vnet that those devices will go and deploy in in uk only right so i for example if i take a west us in the in the in this scenario so west us is a region what is the region i said collection data center or a geography let me go to west us you can't you can't really select west us east us like this in in uh, azure but if i go to aws you can select each region separately just give me a second that's the fundamental difference between azure and aws operations right so on the left hand side if you see all these are regions so before you go ahead and deploy something you select where you want to deploy it currently my url is set to east us let's say i want to place devices in mumbai so if you select mumbai the total url will change ap south one console so you do anything you want to do that you can you your your uh, what i'll say deployments or your day to day work will be done on mumbai region okay ap south one in aws but when it comes to azure that is not the case let's say i want to create a network right that is that is a aim so virtual network create while creating a network you'll have a granular level option let's say where you want to create in which region so i'll say west us 
and under which resource group east us prod resource group is sitting in east us so, okay when you select a resource group under one subscription it automatically set back to east us you can alter it later on in which range in which region you want to deploy west us and vnet one or dr underscore vnet one okay so now if i go to next address space and subnet okay so let's say this is the region under resource group east us underscore prod underscore resource group one i am trying to define one vnet one logical boundary Okay, which is dr underscore vnet1 is the name. Right. So, wh what is this? Everything is in Azure. Right. And you're actually defi defining something in West. But your resource group is actually running in East US. Okay, so this resource group is actually running in East US, but logically controlling your West US VNet means your resource group is not a region bounded. So I just want to remove it. Don't want to confuse with the too many complex pictures. So if you, if I take this entire is West US region. So you are not only one customer who is using Azure. You have millions of customers across the globe who are actually deploying the things on a day to day in most of those regions. Right. So how it will differentiate between other customers and you. So if you draw a thin barrier. Within the region, let's say this is my setup. So what I have my unique identification is there. My tenant ID under my subscription under my resource group right i am creating this vnet and this is my resource group the name is this so i have a subscription and i have a tenant id tenant id i logged in means i got a tenant id and subscription when you are creating a vnet it will ask you under which subscription one you one tenant can have multiple subscriptions so i said this is the subscription under the subscription i have a resource group so subscription resource group and defining vnet similarly let's say uh, yeah anurag is trying to log in and trying to deploy some resources in Azure, he has his own tenant ID and his own subscription and his own resource group, and he can define his VNet. Right, VNet. So when I define a VNet one, let's say he is defining something like this. This is his private IP range, what he is defining in West US. Now my business also demands the same IP range. I can define it. And in fact, these two are private ranges. So treat this as your, treat this VNet as your home building. Okay. In the first example, what I gave, just give me a second. Yeah. In this case, you treat this outer boundary, what I said is building. You treat this as a VNet, right? So your VNet is your logical boundary. Other customers, other VNet or within your, within your, uh, what I'll say, uh, re uh, account, you have a multiple VNets. Each VNet will act as an individual boundary. Let's say this is one of your home and you have one Wi-Fi router. Right. Similarly, uh, if you, if you go to Azure, if you define one VNet, that is one logical boundary. If internally within the boundary everything is private correct 
if data is leaving this boundary and coming out then it is public correct over here do the same do the same here within this within this let me change this color to some green right within this green boundary we are vnet boundary everything is private which is 10.100.0.0/16 is the range and if data is leaving this boundary you need public if you need a public ips you can get and attach it logically to these devices but further what i said within the vnet you can further define subnets what is the significance of the subnets i've already told you i'll say like this i've defined three subnets now what is this web and the second one is app and third one is db now what kind of ip ranges that i will define let's say it must be subset of your vnet 100.10.0.24 this is for web correct and for application 20 and for database 30. So these are the three logical segregations within your VNet. How to define it? Let's go back to Azure and give your VNet name, virtual network name and IP ranges. IP address space by default it will show you 10.0.0.0 16 that's a, a default allocation and it will give you 65536 ips what i will do i'll simply change it to 10.100 right that is what my defined range is this is vnet right and the subnet you can define web 10.0.0 20.0.0/16 see you will get an error the subnet ip range is not contained in this virtual network address space so whatever the ip range that you specify for the subnet it it must be a part of your subset of your vnet you can't randomly give anything in the subnet so what i will do 10.100.10.0/ slash 24 so if i give slash 24 you see 20 251 ips you will get and five ips reserved for azure what all those five ips is 0 1 2 3 and then 255 right so this is for your web what about the app app 10 100 20.0 24 now, if I want to give 25, you see, 123 IPs and five are reserved. And 29, if I give 29, your IP boundary is this, zero to seven, and you hardly get eight IPs. Out of eight, Azure will eat five. You will only get three. Okay, if I give 30, Azure will say you can't use it. See? 30 if i give 30 your total boundary size is 4 azure need 5 default from where you will get 5 so the minimum configuration what you can do in azure is starting from 29 right if you give slash 29 you will get a smallest boundary of 8 ips within that 8 ips 5 will be taken by azure you can use 3 for your operations right slow slash 24 i'm using the outer boundary as 16 and inside a smaller chunks or a smaller subset boundaries 
as slash 24. In each subnet, I can place 251 devices. I will say database, I don't have a bigger requirement. Then what I can do 10.200.30.26. Then what I can do 10.200.30.26. Oh, my bad. 100. That will not change. So you'll get a 64 IPs as a boundary. And out of that, five is taken out and you'll get 59 IPs. Means you can place 59 database servers inside this v, this subnet. Right. And we uh, can increase that later, uh, Srinivas? Yes, you can increase it. Okay. And what is the service endpoint at the bottom Sorry. it is showing? You have multiple things. Once deployed, service endpoints are internally if you want to communicate with the rest of the components, which are IAS, which are not IAS. Let's say past services are there and you want to in integrate with those services, you will use service endpoints internally. Okay, just like your intercom. Okay. So I'll leave these options for now as a default and you can specify the tags based on the project requirement for which project that you are using and who is the escalation contact if you want to modify something. Deploy. All right, this is your VNet which is deployed. If I want to use same vnet let's say i've created one vnet and address space is this so go to address space i can expand this address space like amoeba so 10 200 16 i can add one more so your vnet boundary become 128000 ips okay that is possible but how you want to design it? No, no. Is there is any requirement 192.168.00/16? That is also possible. Combination of class A and class C. Okay. So, just just an option. But where exactly we will use this kind of stuff? Okay. Uh, this this kind of mismatch configurations that we will discuss when you are talking about some real time scenarios. Right. So this is your VNet. If I want to create a, another VNet, what I will do, I'll go ahead and create a same sort of thing under same resource group, dr underscore VNet2, invest US only. Next, I will use the same IP range, 10.100. So it will just give you an, a warning boss you are already using this range please keep in mind but it will allow you to create it will never stop you to create a duplicate ip ranges right so you can create but you will never see these kind of duplicate ip ranges in your customer environment but if you are if you are just practicing the things, yes, it will support. But problem when the problem come into picture when you try to exchange between two these two vnets, okay, both of both the devices having the same IP, then how you will exchange the data? There will be duplicate IP reflecting on the system. Then how how data will travel? Then there will be a problem. So that's the reason why. It is giving an warning message saying, boss, you already have one logical boundary with the same IP range. You are trying to create a same duplicate range. Please relook into it. Now, I want to create a two duplicate ranges and a two IP ranges or a two VNets that I want to dedicate it to two business units. And in their lifetime, they will independently work. They will never come together to exchange some data. In that case, yes, you can create. If there is any future requirement that both the networks will come together and join one single network, then you'll have a problem. 
Understood? You are you have a clarity saying these two uh, these two V nets in their lifetime they will never communicate with each other. Then you can always do that. When you are the moment when you are trying to connect both of them and exchange some data, then you will not be able to connect both of them. You will get you will get an error message saying duplicate IP ranges. You can't join both of them. Right, that I will show you maybe in tomorrow's session when we talk about further on a VNet, subnet, and day-to-day -day operations within the network. Right, with this, I'll stop here. Any questions? Ashwini, you have created a class A and class C on VNet, right? Is that possible? Uh, yes, that is possible. That's the reason why I gave you the, the IP ranges. Okay. Right. So that is quite possible. But when you actually use it, that depends on the customer scenario. But we, you know, we are very often you will see these kind of requirements that come in. So combine these two ranges. I want to exchange some data from on premise to here. Then we'll, we'll try and create some separate segregated IP range. Afterwards, we, we will see when we need to remove it, we will remove it. Otherwise, we keep running as it is. All right, so I'll stop here. Any other questions, guys? Come on. We still have 10 minutes. No I I have a, a question, Srinivas. Yeah. Uh, you created the VNets. Uh, your recommendation is when we are doing lab, we should delete everything. Is VNet also chargeable on its own or it's not charging anything? VNet is free. At the moment, VNet is free. The moment you okay. try to send or receive data between that boundary, then it is chargeable. For every 1 GB, there will be some cost. But if you create okay. a unless we allocate it to a VM, there is no charge, correct? No, unless if you create a VM, you keep it as it is, you don't use it, then it's free. Okay. Okay. Right, guys. So, so that's all for today. I uh, will connect back tomorrow, same time, and continue further on the networking side. And also, if if you guys want to enroll and continue, I have seen somewhere around 10 plus. But if you guys want to continue, I haven't received a payment. I got a payment from some of the people. So tomorrow, uh, I can't I can't really allow onto the same session. So if you want to really uh, continue on that thing, just do the payment of six thousand and continue. I guess I've seen Shuray, Shaker, Mitra. Krishna, I guess I got from you, right? And Abdul. And someone joined with the incident ID. I don't know. What is that? IN9034. Yeah. That's P. Sagar. Yeah. <laughs> what is that incident, man? Uh, that's my employee ID. It's defaultly is taken. It I thought some remedy incident ID. <laughs> Seriously. <laughs> <laughs> so, Somebody uh, contacting you for tech support, Srinivas. <laughs> huh? Somebody contacting you for tech support, okay. Give me your support only. <laughs> right, yeah. So, guys, yeah, I, I already shared the details in the group. You just send me 6,000. And also, enroll, as I said, into go to vimeo.com and enroll yourself. And just follow me. I can share these videos. Uh, Sinos, so can you share your mutual ID changing? One by one, one by one, please. Yanura, can you please mute yourself? Others are talking. Yeah. Sinos, can you please add me into the group? Uh, since I'm not part of that group, uh, so that I can't chance to transfer the money. Can you please add uh, Mitra, me? Right? Mitra, right? No. Mitra, no. right? Sagar? Sagar? Yeah, ping me. Ping me. Ping me on WhatsApp separately. Okay, I'll, I'll share the details and I'll add you to the group. Yeah, Mitra, you're saying something? Yeah, so all the recordings of today's class would be uh, available uh, like on. Okay, so the plan is recordings are there. Okay, I'll okay. share it with the one who, who does the payment. Okay, okay that is cool. Uh, right? Yeah, yeah. You'll send us the link or like how it has been done? Uh, you have to you have to enroll, I'll tell you. Okay, so quickly I'll go to Vimeo. Okay. 
Alright, so let me log off. So join and mm -hmm. please make sure Azure 18 is the first name you have to set and then space your, uh, I'll say, email ID and password. Okay. Right? So that once I log into the system. Okay. I'll simply search for, let's say, Azure 7, 18. Okay, so Azure 18. I'll get who are all already registered. So I can only share with these people. Okay. Cool. So, so for me, I have other batches, right? So it's hard for me to track individuals to give access. That's the reason why I've, I've, I've asked you to set like that. Sure. Right? So you guys, you guys just, uh, enroll in this portal and then let me know so that I can share the videos. So the past two classes also would be available here. Right? Yes, yes, everything. Yeah, everything I can share. Okay. Yeah, I have already uploaded the past sessions. Okay. Right? You'll get access to everything. Sure, sure. Thank you. All right, so let's stop here and